according to his word will meet your every day. Hallelujah. You are worried because you are serving a God you do not know. If you know this God, then you know what we are talking Amen. about from this platform. He is a God against all odds. Which means that whatever that you're going through today, He is your God. It may be sickness, it may be financial loss, it may be any other things uh, that have been challenging your life today, or whatever odds that you're sitting on, I would like you to believe and receive today that He is that God against all odds. in the mighty matchless name Hallelujah. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Welcome to this God of Our Nation program 10.30 every <coughs> Sunday, Sunday morning. morning. So we say greetings from the studio here in Suba to all of you that are tuning live on Facebook of My TV, Facebook of New Melodies, and also on the big screen. Hallelujah. On the My TV. Oh, what a blessing to our nation that we have a program such as this. That God will download, hallelujah, his blessing is what we give to you. And we take this time to greet you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. To NCF, we take this time to say in Bulabinaka, we can do Vianyanu. Kim do my lau, katalagi na kandabu, lo my viti, kim do my asawa, in Bulabinaka. All the island zone and uh, all the islands in the worship center, we take this time to say in Bulabinaka, in Bulabinaka mai, matabinaka mai, and matakani singani dai. Sinuli dami kam domina voliku, we take us away, we can do an esmagara, esanaumba, we can do an esogolotu, and a central kenda. Mission Sunday. Thank you for all your service. Amen. To talk to me, come down. So we send to the Takusu Mai Sinai Tiko. So I want to pull it to God. We Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do the central. So you will have to say, "Roa." What the kind of music? Ni bula menaka. Ni mata menaka mai. Can you say, "I want to pull it to God"? And the singer will not be able to do it. So you will have to say, "Eastern." What the kind of music? What the Amen. The sharing that we will do this morning will be very powerful, very profound, and I believe it's also important for you to understand and to know, and especially to do it. And that's why we're saying hello. Amen. Not forgetting uh, the Western Division and as well as our foreign people. Nakabakalebu. Thank you, New Zealand. I saw your meeting yesterday on the regional coordinators. Hallelujah. And uh, thank you, Australia. Thank you, Auntie Marama, for the meeting on the women yes. yesterday. Uh, thank you, Europe. Thank you so much. Thank you for those of you who belong to the virtual zone. Vinaka uh, Vakalebu. Bula Vinaka all the way from Turaki uh, in Suva. In Fiji, in uh, for those of you in America, thank you, Tonga Chavez, and Sylvia, and Auntie uh, Eleanor, and also Tonga Sisi, not forgetting Tonga Lamero and Galivere, all the way in Sacramento. Sacramento. Uh, we say greetings and we say thank you uh, for taking the time to tune in, and not forgetting Tonga Stukana and Auntie Nena, and uh, ASP Vika Fadumu, all the way in Hawaii. Thank you. Uh, thank you for all of you who do not belong to New Methodist, but yet uh, you have been a very good uh, supporter to uh, New Methodist in terms of your seating, in terms of your prayer and um, being part of the big family of fellowship. We take this time today to also acknowledge you and thank you for all the heart uh, that you have uh, to believe in what we teach and to be part of our, uh, this fellowship. We stand today uh, to say big vinaka vakaleo and also an acknowledgement to the virtual uh, conference that we had last week. Uh, yeah, there was uh, yeah, there was very powerful and not only that, very well attended though uh, from the 14 countries involved uh, with about uh, 85 uh, to 90 uh, members uh, on Zoom or online for this virtual conference that we had uh, for Saturday, and then we ended with a Sunday service at the Eastern Division. So we, we say thank you uh, for all your commitment. Yes. We may not be meeting physically, but we are connected in the spirit, yeah. and uh, we stand here uh, to say thank you for everything that you continue to do and everything that you continue to believe in this God that he can only he can do uh, in your life. So a big acknowledgement. Also, yeah. to those of you who do not belong to New Methodist, no, uh, you belong to any denomination either. Nor do you believe in anything that is called God. So you are actually just sitting in front of your television station, or maybe you're watching through your phone, uh, you know, being curious. Uh, what are these two uh, talking about? Uh, yet another Sunday, I see their faces again. Uh, we always come in every Sunday.
Sunday morning on the 10.30 service to say uh, that we can teach on the kingdom principle and not only that, uh, the kingdom economics uh, against all odds regardless of whatever that you're doing. It can be sickness, uh, it can be uh, family abuse, it can be domestic abuse, it can be all sorts of levels and different uh, things that you go through. At the end of it all, the only thing and the only assurance uh, that we can be bold to stand and share every Sunday morning, uh, there is a reason uh, for your season, which is only the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, whether you believe in God or you do not, or whether you go to an attend a denomination and you're not a member of any denomination, but if you have been part of this program uh, since we started way back in March uh, 2020, we would like to say yet again, thank you uh, for being part of this fellowship and thank you for believing uh, in this God and his name is Jesus. So on that note, I will pass to Ngasilevo. Today we would like to share a little more uh, in depth on uh, giving. Praise the Lord, because in the kingdom economics, it's uh, opposite to the secular, and it's always like that. Totally opposite. You know, in the secular or in the normal living, uh, you won't want to give knowing that you have that very thing to live on. Say, uh, if you have one chicken to feed your family for that particular week, and, and you know, you're convicted or you look at another family that is in need, uh, the thought of giving is not even there. All you have your money all laid out and uh, planned and budgeted for your payments, um, you know, your home uh, financials for the week. All that money, all, you know, it has a reason why it's there and you have your money in the bank or you have your money in the wallet. But yet, uh, when you look around and there is a need or you hear of a need, uh, you're oblivious and you know, you're deaf or blind to that. Uh, because you're looking at your need first before you even think uh, to share. But in the kingdom, is totally different. Uh, totally kingdom different. economics is totally different. Totally you can different. be sitting on your need. Your bill can be due. But when you have the conviction from the Holy Spirit uh, to convict you to give, that conviction is so strong and so, yeah, it's just so strong. I mean, I'm speaking from experience that you will give and with no question asked, to, to, you know, to ask God, well, you tell me to give that, you know, how will I look after mine? That's not the question for you to ask. When you reach that level, uh, the needs around you, because you can hear him well and you give out to those needs, you are giving out of faith. And when you give out of faith, God looks after your need. Well, some of us haven't reached that level uh, of giving out when you are in need or giving uh, out yeah. of your need. But the most powerful currency that you can operate on uh, with your faith Jeez. in God is for you to give out of your need. The very thing for you to live on. And you hold it and you see and you look around and God is trying to tell you, look, it may be befitting for you now, but it's more need uh, to this particular family or to this particular need uh, to this particular family or to this particular individual and, and that is where you drop their ten dollars or drop their two dollars or drop their five dollars or drop their hundreds or drop their thousands whichever currency and whichever amount that they bring in I take that as a uh, responsible uh, for that because they are planting into the very word of God that they hear through the television station and that goes to all of you uh, who belong to a denomination you must give your tithe to where you are hearing or feeding your spiritual soul and tithe it's like um, it's not a topic of discussion. 
Yeah, if you're a Christian, it belongs to God. And uh, with that thinking, if you look after the administration, if you give to the denomination you belong to, uh, it looks after the administration of the church, and automatically, God looks after the administration of your home. So if you will give the time, then he looks after your home. He looks after your rent. He looks after your meals are supposed to be having daily. Uh, he looks after your electricity bill. He looks after all your bills because you are stepping out in faith. The amount is insignificant. The just amount one, is not. Just one ten. Yeah, it's, it's just one ten. Say if you're getting $50 a week, then you must give uh, a tenth of that, which is $5. And if you're getting $100, $10. $10. Uh, only $10. So it's never the amount, it's the, uh, obedience. the obedience to pay that tenth. And uh, yet you have other offering. Um, I teach the church for New Methodists, I know this is not new to you. When you know you're projecting, you're planning uh, to buy a house, to buy a car, get the costing right down, uh, where did you see it, take a picture. You know, you dream big, but you activate your dream. And then you start planting. If I'm giving a seed, uh, if you belong to a zone, and there are discussions going on to the zone, your blueprint, or whatever the zone is involved with, um, or your mission Sunday, like today for the central, write your list, write your list. Um, a house, a car, or my children, or little things, maybe so huge uh, in amount and very less, whatever it is. You write down all those in the list, and then you activate them uh, through your offering. You call them your activators, meaning I'm going to continue to give this, and I, I plan in my life that I'm going to be going, doing this, and you circle it, the amount, whatever that you have, uh, have a covenant with God. And that amount, one day or the other, you name it towards the activator uh, for what you're sitting on. And I used to share, share way back when I was working at the airline, Gasselevo had a, a more senior position than mine. I started off as the clerk typist, went on to be the administrative assistant. Uh, after being the administrative assistant, then I went to be the staff travel officer. Then I became maybe one week old uh, executive assistant, uh, corporate. Um, and then that position was wiped out again. Then I went on to be the customer relations officer, then project manager. And then after the project manager, the manager customer relations. And then I got offered for the uh, general manager position. And I said, I, I think I've done my due. So I walked uh, out. And all those positions and the levels that I was going, um, because like physically, if you're applying to any organization, they will ask for your, you know, your CV, your credentials, your certificates, or whatever that you have achieved. But for me, I'll, I started work when I was only in the first term, or first month of uh, Form 6. So I started working very early. And all the courses that I wanted to do, because we went earlier into the church and the founding of the ministry, uh, all the finances that I have projected to um, then I have the time because I've got my four children and I'm ready to do my studies. But it didn't happen. Uh, it went automatically to the church. And with that, uh, that was happening. So I always read act Activator. I give my tithe, direct deduction from my pay, and I always have Activator. I even removed what I want my office to be. And yet, I, I was not uh, a senior staff. But with that dream, uh, believing in this God and activating it uh, with my giving, it took me from one level to another, to another, to another, in the highest level that I could even project or for anyone working in the airline and to walk away from there. And uh, for me, I take that all into the giving. So I'm sharing this with you because you can be sitting on your need uh, for foreign. You can be sitting on your visa. Uh, maybe you're applying for your residential visa uh, for England, for Europe. You may be applying for your ILR. You may be applying for your citizenship. Uh, a lot of things that you're sitting on. Or you want to buy property in the... Um, England, in uh, Scotland, in any other country, in Germany, or in New Zealand and Australia. You know, things which you look and say, okay, no one has ever done that before. Oh, it's so huge. It's so expensive. No, don't be, you know, taken up by the mountain that you look at. You, in your spirit, you're a go-getter. And you know, you believe in this God. If you're giving your tithe and you activate it, so you're giving, you give to receive. Don't just give and keep on looking at, okay, what am I getting out of my giving? No, it's, it doesn't work that way. You give because you love God and you know there is a teaching, it is a principle, a godly principle from the Bible. And so when you give, you will receive. So when you give your time, yes, obviously God will look at a way to, to reward you back. So the volume of your receiving, um, you cannot measure. Because you cannot measure that of your faith in giving. So it becomes your tithe, your offering, your activator. And all those areas in whatever, in your family, in your workplace, uh, in your zone, in your worship center, in your community, uh, within your family, your relatives, anything can happen. 
anything can happen because you believe not in the capacity of what you can get or who you are, but you totally believe in this God who can do all things. The Bible says, see, all this explanation is, is biblical. Jesus said, give Hallelujah. shall be given good measure, pressed down, shaken, running over. Hallelujah. There is a connection of those that are not giving and the level of poverty that you receive. Amen. Hallelujah. For those that have a big heart to give, that means they trust in God. They have faith in God. Regardless of what they have, they trust in God because the word says, not Peter, not John, Jesus said, Hallelujah. Don't do solely. Do it. Don't do solely. Pressed down, shaken, running over. 
and we've been operating on a go ready to go to Mulani Rendini. Lago Amai, Lago, Lago Amai Lago, Yana Lemugani Lago. Hallelujah. This is a practical yeah. Christianity. I believe when you when you are selfless, when you call in the Kopakalevo, then your heart is big to look out and consider the need of others. Be because you are not looking at yourself. At yourself. Yeah. yeah, the very thing, I think that's most vital. Yeah. Uh, very important. And that's uh, uh, I mean it's natural for human being.
able to come into a situation and do something about it. Now, you actually, you know, God's hand is tied. He can't do anything because God only works according to his, his word. word. His only his word. Not about everybody's explanation. Not about, you know, what you think. Not about your condition. And you're thinking, okay, I'm really in lack and I'm going to church. God is supposed to help me. No. He will look at your situation, but he will not help you. You will need to give. That's the principle. You give and he comes back. You love God and then he loves you with everything. He takes you in the way you are. You can be the sinner you are. You can be lacking in so many ways. But from today, you make a promise and make a decision in your heart. I'm going to rise. Maybe not to the level Level that we are anticipating you to be, but race to another level. Try and tweak the little things of your life. If you haven't been going to church, well, find a church to go to. Take your children to church. And I remember way back, there was a question asked to this daughter, and this is a mother who was sharing with me, and I know you may be listening in today too. And uh, she said, until I, we, uh, you know, we, we used to go to church, and then something happened, we stopped going to church, and every Sunday it's like a, a good day for us to go for a movie, and then they always go for a movie. And not until their daughter went on to school, and the teacher asked, okay, uh, on Sunday, do, where do you people go on Sunday? Oh, we go to church. So she was asking around the name of the church, and came to her daughter. And when, she, when the teacher asked her daughter the name of the church, she mentioned the cinema. You know, sometimes... We say to ourselves, okay, we don't really need God. Yes, you can afford your life. You have everything that you ever wanted. Yes. Who is God? You know, begin to ask yourself, who is God? This is my life. I've earned everything. I managed this, and I worked hard for what I have. At the end of the day, one day, one day, there will be the buckling moment for you to feel that there is a God, and his name is Jesus. All you need to do is to love him. All you need to do is to live a life that is worthy of his calling. What is a life worthy of his calling? That integrity, the life of a good heart, the life of looking out for other people around you. Yes, you can still achieve, you can still succeed, but you have a better, cleaner, clearer heart and a sound mind with clarity that you have all the integrity, not made by man, the integrity given by God. The Bible says oh, in uh, Psalm 127, eh? If God does not build the house, then yes. the builders will work in vain. Hallelujah. If God is not watching the city, and those that watch the city will watch in vain. Hallelujah. Early in the morning you rise, and late at night you come back, and you eat the bread of sorrows. Amen. While God give peace or sleep to those that love. Oh, hallelujah. You can say, uh, maybe some of us, we never go to church, we don't believe. You said, I achieve this, I, I'm holding this position. But my friend, the peace that you are searching for, that no alcohol, that no sex, no achievement, no position in this life can give to you. The Bible says, the peace that I'll give to you is not the world can give to you. Because the peace that the world gives to you is only very limited, Hallelujah. very short-lived. And that's why a lot of people, maybe you earning, maybe you achieving, but the peace that you are searching for is not there. Amen. Hallelujah. While people die laughing, you will die worrying. That's why it's important for us to understand that there is Amen. a God. There is a supreme God. Oh, hallelujah. There is a God that is alive. And his purpose is for us to enjoy this life. And the after that, life. you enter into his kingdom. And oh, that hallelujah. is the kingdom of heaven. Now, back to our giving. Our giving is not, hallelujah, is not the blessing to the church. It's not a blessing to the pastor that you give. No, it can be. But the giving is the blessing to the give hand up. that give. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you are giving, because I've, I've come through that, and I start to realize that the more I give, the, the more, more yeah. I receive. Because the level of my receive depends on the level of, of my, my giving. giving. Yeah. And that is the principle. That's why Jesus speaks a lot on fishermen and those the farmers. The more that they invest into the land, the more harvest comes. See, that is the principle of giving. That is Amen. the principle of giving, the principle of sowing and reaping. And the, the devil is very smart. The devil wants us not to give because he knows yeah. When we give to God, God will multiply according to his word five times. It will be given good measure, pressed down, shaken, running over. Oh, hallelujah. And when we well. are lack, we can curse God. That's what the 
See, the devil and make us run to, uh, to the money lender and make us go and carry, carry here, carry, carry there. So we are not fulfilling in what we Amen. are doing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because the devil is a deceiver. Yeah. Hallelujah. The giving is part and parcel of God. The Hallelujah. Bible says in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he, he gave his gave. only son. So the giving attached with love. Hallelujah. Yeah, Hallelujah. When, you, when you love people around you, when you love your family, you will give. You give your time. Yeah, you give uh, You give everything that you have. Hallelujah. Yeah, you will. Yeah. I mean, it's a good uh, conversation that we're having this morning because we actually can talk about yeah. Uh, the level of not knowing about giving and coming to re the, the realization of knowing the powerful of giving. Oh. Uh, I struggle. I struggle when we uh, start with uh, uh, with Ngasilebu. Uh, sometimes if I give out things, you know, he'll turn to me and he said, did you really need to give that? Uh, and I, you know, why am I sharing this? Because it can be the same conversation. Are you having at home with your husband and wife? Uh, the same conversation that you have. Uh, and you are going to church. So don't be ashamed of it. Yeah, those conversations are bound to happen. It should happen before the breakthrough happens. Uh, those conversations, the differences, because you're brought up from two uh, different uh, uh, backgrounds, a different family. I mean, we came from two different families. And, and as we, you know, uh, create our family and work our family out, those are the little things. I, I, have, I see things differently, and he does, but that's part of the package of being married. And uh, it's a give and take. So most of the time, if I give out, and then, oh, we'll be sitting, and then he'll be saying, uh, seeing another uh, senior pastor wearing the shirt, and he turned to me and he said, that looks like my shirt. I said, it is your shirt. And uh, he said, if you've given it, instead I gave out one, one suitcase, out, I, I thought, <laughs> you have more than enough. And sometimes, oh, around, hallelujah. Uh, there'll be two suitcases, so I will tell him, uh, can you call a senior pastor this and senior pastor there to come and pick up the suitcases? And then uh, he will say, suitcases of what? Instead of your clothes. I, I don't see you using it uh, often, so I packed them in the suitcase. If you can call them to pick it. Uh, those kind of things. And and I see, like, for him, he's even finding, trying to find space uh, to put his yeah. shirt and uh, place his uh, uh, clothes. No. And, and I was telling him, those are the things that come when you give. And uh, I'll take us back. I don't know whether you remember. We were in England, and uh, we usually go down uh, for Christmas and uh, sometimes New Year. And there was this particular year that we were there. I can't really figure out which year was it. But uh, I think it was 2010. I can't really remember. And... Uh, we were in a camp. There was a, a conference for the whole week. We were in a different camp. And uh, that evening, we were supposed to have the uh, New Year service. And uh, usually when we go, and my family knows, uh, when we go, my suitcases, I can be taking two because we go to Korean there, uh, and you enter to the two uh, suitcases, suitcases because of the morning come, um, cards. And uh, those two suitcases, and they know, even their suitcases, I'll be calling out, okay, don't pack too much. Uh, you can give me some space. And those space was just to pack biscuits for the family back in uh, Europe. Yeah, sure. And I know Europe, uh, you know what I'm talking about, Germany and Scotland. So when they're coming all over Europe to meet in England, I pack biscuits that can cater the whole 20 families all over Europe and bongos and twisties and whatever bean. and bean <laughs> so i look for the very small space for my clothes and i just take clothes enough for the week for the conference and after that then i will leave all my clothes back i'll buy he knows what i'm talking about and i'll buy a skirt and a top or buy something to wear back home and i'm coming back home with you know nothing and uh, this particular year I was doing the same thing, so we were, were working towards our evening um, New Year service within the same camp. And I was writing the normal thing. Uh, Europe, you will understand what I'm talking about this morning. So I, I usually uh, wrap down the, you know, the paper and write down their names, family names, or women, and they can fit into my dresses. And so the whole uh, clothes wrapped up was on top of the bed, and I was trying to put them in the bag and suitcase uh, to take it to church and up the church to clear, because on the very next day we were flying back to Fiji. And uh, he came, uh, he looked at the two empty suitcases and said, so what are you going to take back? And I said, no, nothing, it's okay. And what are you wearing? Don't worry. Um, tomorrow we're just going to look for something for me to wear back. And that was it. I pack up all these things. So, And about four hours before the service, we receive a call. Oh, the venue has changed. It's not going to be happening in the camp where you were at. Now it's changed. It's going to be moved to Gosport, which is another uh, place. And uh, we said, okay. So we went there. 
And even then, we packed the suitcases, went in the car, went, and then we had the service, New Year's service, good, uh, powerful um, New Year's service. And at the end, usually, on the last day that we are in England, we usually have our headquarters meeting uh, with the headquarters staff that are out there. Uh, and all this uh, stuff. And um, after the service, everybody have gone out, go to for a refreshment, we said to have the meeting. So S.P. Koto came and uh, he said, that lady would like to see you. And I said, which lady? And um, she's sitting right, in, uh, right there in front. Uh, what do you think? Uh, we have our meeting or you would like to see her? And uh, I said, okay, just call her. I'll speak with her and then we'll have our meeting. So she came and I know you're listening to her this morning. So when she came, when she spoke, the voice sounds so familiar. And, but I couldn't, you know, just couldn't get her face and I, I can't remember her name. And as we spoke and she said, uh, for three years I used to call you for prayer. And, uh, and I'm glad that I, was, I worked in London. I was glad because when I was in the office today and I saw in the Facebook that you people are having your service in this camp and this is where I stay. Uh, I mean, I told, I'm close to, to this camp. I said, okay. I said, I can't remember. I said, no, uh, we haven't met, but I've always called you for prayer. And then I said, okay, no wonder your voice sounds so familiar. And then she said, uh, we've just bought a house. We would like you and your husband to come and pray over our, our property. And I said, okay, uh, we will come. We'll have our meeting. And after the meeting, on our way back to where we stay, we'll uh, drop by at your place. So we had our meeting, and then we dropped by at her place. When I walked into her house, it's a three-level um, property. Place. Beautiful. It's like I'm walking into those homes in the magazine. Uh, beautiful. I was, you know, I, I, I love creating things, but when you walk into one, you can just easily identify, you know, the branding and everything. So I walked in and said, man, you've got a very beautiful home, so beautiful. So we came, we sat in the lounge, and then she said, I want to so, show you the other two levels. I said, okay, so we went up. On the second level, it's like her walk-in wardrobe. And uh, on the third, the kitchen's downstairs. When we came back to the second level, she said, she stood in the middle of that, and she said, uh, Randini, would you like to choose anything you want from this room? And I said, no. The shoes is all over the floor. It's like you're walking into a um, clothes department store, and, or a boutique for that matter, everything draped in plastic. And the tags, you can still physically see the price tag of those clothes hanging out. And I look at her and I said, no, I'm not going to do that. And she said, I haven't met you, but I've just been burdened if you... If you can just choose some of the clothes you want to take with you and the shoes and said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'll go back downstairs. You do what the Holy Spirit leads you to do. Only then. If he tells you to do it, then you do it. But I'm not going to do it. So we came down. We had our dinner. And on our way back to um, where the hotel that we were staying in, then I saw Talanga Sikoto, which I know you can identify with it this morning. I think there was Talanga Sikoto. We have uh, Talatamani Bulumbulu. Uh, a few people were there with us that particular night. And she, he had these two big suitcases. I looked back and I said, what are those suitcases for? And uh, he said, no, the lady has packed the suitcases for you. I said, oh, okay, thank you. So we went. When we reached the hotel and I opened these two suitcases filled with branded clothes, uh, there were... I just counted the dresses. There were 70, 70, not one seven, seven, seven zero, zero. Uh, dresses with price tag. And then she texted to say, uh, if you don't be, you know, taken away by the, uh, the tags on the dresses. And she said, I live on this high end. I work on this high end street in London. And every time I walk across this boutique of clothes, uh, that ranges from 400 to 1,000, 3,000 pounds. Oh, and then she said, uh, I'm always waiting when it's on sale. And that's when I go and you know, when they clear it, that's when I buy. And then she said for five years, five years ago, uh, she was doing that, buying that. Not until the day I walked in for us to go and pray for her property or for her newly bought uh, property in a house. Then she said, when you walked in, I didn't realize all the clothes that I was buying for five years was actually for you. Because the size, the design and everything was just for you. Hallelujah. And uh, it's just amazing. And then I look back and I said, every year I've been coming, and all I do is leaving my clothes behind, leaving my clothes behind, taking the biscuits up. I never anticipated that. I never even thought of that, but God did. So you're giving, it's not only money. You're giving, it's giving your time. It's giving the little things that you have at home. I'm uh, giving the best because God wants you to be living in the best. Don't settle for anything less. 
You are settling for anything less because you're giving whatever the leftovers you have in your life. Because you're going to go to the house. Now, you're going to go to the house. You're going to go to the house. You're going to go to the house. No. Give your best. And don't settle for anything less. If you want the best, then you need to give your best. Best out, best in. Whatever you give out, it comes back to you. I want to and speak, no, a, yeah, I want no to ending. speak again on, on, on the suitcase. Hallelujah. You're talking about going to you. Um, I, I learned a lot from that because we work in the airline, we travel a lot. And every time we travel, and uh, overseas church will know, and every time we travel, we, we also have a scale, always. <laughs> to always me. in my bed. Where your suitcase other than being told of the and, counter? And the people will think that that's all closed. No. These are the bean, the lacari, the murku, murku uh, the bongo, the twisties. This for the church out there. You know, the and when, there, yeah. when, when she's explaining and sharing, this is our secret that we are sharing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That 70 dresses branded. So when you talk about 70 pounds, that's times three. So when you talk about 100 pounds, you talk about times three. So yeah. all these branded yeah. tags. And all was, those price tags, the, the, the littlest, I mean, the very smallest amount that I can see was 300 pounds. All the rest was 300 pounds up. I mean, who does that? And that's God. Because I, it's not that I, I, I pray to God and say, Lord, I would like some clothes. I'm giving out some clothes, but I would love some clothes. But I didn't say that prayer. You know, it's a very life that you live. that you leave. As you give, he floods you back that only you can find in God. Because the food that we give, because when we look at uh, Luke uh, 6, the day, yeah, because the things that you give satisfy you. Amen. In your mental, in your physical, yes. and in your spirit. Yes. Yeah. So, na kanta may kotho mo tigo pa kayo. Yeah. Yeah. Kung wala siya, magaling siya Roma in total talaga. Yeah. So when we when we give, when we open, because it's according to His word. Yes. It's and, His and, and as you explained, there is a relationship on the giving and the heart. Yes. You cannot give until your heart is good. Yes. Your 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 hands. Your hands giving out yeah. because the, the, the performance of your hands depends on the condition of your heart. So, if you have a good time, you can see it in the soli. If you have a good time, you can see it in the soli. If you have a good time, you can see it That's why we will always run this program that you must have a good heart. And you, Methodist, you must have a good heart. And let me make it that you know. I love bygones to be bygones. Give a kiss on the guy. Other week, you don't really like it. Okay, say it out, spew it out, talk it out, scream it out, yell it out, and then say, "Okay, thank you. I'm going to go this way." Because so when you need to clear your heart. When your heart is clear, then your hand will do yeah. the hands of God. You become the hands of God. You become you become the mouth and the words of God. Yes. Because your heart, everything begins. Yeah. And then it becomes genuine. Your yes. giving becomes genuine. You don't give because you want something in return. You give because you love to give. You give because you love the person you're giving to. You give because you heard right from God, you know, to give into that situation. And I, I've just written something down this morning uh, when I was, uh, you know, uh, waiting for Gassi to come back. I remember when we were preparing. I don't know if you can still remember the year uh, that we were, we were preparing for 
for Pastor Ophir or SP Ophir's yes. uh, uh, wedding. And in that particular year, oh, we were so bogged down with travel and uh, conferences in England and Australia. And we were just in and out of the country. And even myself, in my heart, I've got this sinking feeling. Oh, man, you know, I haven't had enough time to plan my daughter. Wedding and everything I was looking for easy way out, uh, looking for caterer because I don't like asking the church and the church is listening to me today. I never want to ask the church to do my song because their level of faith, not to my level of faith. I don't want to rely on them to because you know, like it's my personal thing, it's mine, not the church. And it's just amazing. And that particular year, my mind was raising. And I remember the day my daughter came knock on my door. Fear, I know you remember this day. And uh, she knocked and said, Mom, can I see you? And I said, Yeah. And then when I look at her, and she, and, you know, she had tears in her eyes and said, Mom, do you realize that I'm getting married next week, uh, next month? And I said, yes, you are. And, and I said, yeah. And then she said, I haven't heard anything or seen anything. Like, Mom, like nothing is happening, but my wedding is next week. And I know, you know, in my heart, I know my daughter is getting married. But with a program that was in hand and we were in and out of the country, I just didn't have the time to sit. So, and I said, you know, be rest assured that this God is in control. So I hugged her. And usually one night every week, we usually go together as a family, take our mat, and I go down to the seawall, and we'll spread the mat, buy our dinner, bring dinner from home, sit there and watch the grandchildren play. And it's like our family time out prayer and eating out in the evening. But we go to the picnic club. And we went the next day, so we draw the dress, uh, set with uh, uh, SP Fear and uh, Kola. So we start drawing the dress, and she said, um, I would like a dress like that. So we start designing her dress and said, okay, look it up in the Google. Where can we buy that? I said, okay, China. I said, okay, how long? So whatever that we were trying to do was running short of time. And then we had one week a conference in England before her wedding uh, in March. And I told her, whatever address, when you order, you give, give England. Because I will be England, in England, and I'll pick it up on the way back to Fiji. So that conversation was happening. And on my on our way out, to fly out, I went and explained to my cousin, thank you, uh, design a dress for her. So there wasn't a moment of planning or months of planning. It was like the spur of the moment. And uh, that particular, before the dress the thing happened, one evening, uh, we plan out, and I was telling her, because we used to go down to the bowling club. Uh, my husband used to love his sweet from there before, the bowling club before. And uh, I told my two daughters, okay, you two go and see this chef and then uh, ask him whether they can cater. So we had a target um, visitors or guests of 1,000. So 750 was for the you know general catering, and 250 was for the v VIP. Even then, I had left my, uh, my work in 2011 slash 13. 12. And uh, this was 2015. There was no source of money coming in for my salary. No, I wasn't getting anything. But I had faith with everything that God uh, was using me to do for his kingdom or me doing it for his kingdom. I was so confident of him that I would say, Lord, uh, out of all these years of knowing you, whatever that you tell me, I always do it. I'm so confident you will look after my daughter's wedding. And that was it. I didn't want to check where the money was coming from. I just have that of faith and contentment and uh, and peace that he was going to do it. So they went and had a meeting, came back with an amount. So for $750, for $15 per head, came to about $11,250. So for the $250, the VIP and the $20 per head by another caterer came to about $5,000. Oh. And um, we went as a family because they were going for that meeting. And I said, I'm not going to come to the meeting. If you will go to the meeting, choose the man who do whatever. I will look for the money. So we were sitting at Tapus. Tanga I think you'll be, uh, you know, you'll remember to, uh, what I'm sharing today. So we are Tanga Simori. We have uh, uh, and us, Gasilevo, myself, and uh, SP Elijah, and the two girls. So we sat there. And before we went to sit, because they were going to go for the meeting for them to pay at least a deposit uh, for the 750 heads, I went with my husband to BSP, put in my card. I came back, and the balance was $3.89. I remember that balance. That balance, like big bone letter to me until today. $3.89. I said, oh, okay, man, I've got $3.89. So he looked at my son and said, okay, this woman is crazy. You know, like, what is $3.89? But for me, it's like, okay, $3.89. So we came, we sat, and now we were having coffee, sitting around, so I was briefing them, okay, the menu selection and everything. After this, we took off for the meeting, we're going to go. And I tell him that uh, we will pay a deposit by next week. And uh, yeah, we had our meeting, we had our meals. So as we stood to leave Tapu City on the fourth floor, this voice, like that's what I'm saying to you, 
this morning. When you know him, oh man, it's so exciting. When I stood up, this was to say, check your balance. So I look at them and said, can somebody else take my card? Because if you know a Tapu City, the BSP is right in the never never. No, it's right in the corner. And the ANZ at least is closer. No one, you know, like they say, okay, you crazy, you just told us you have three dollars at eighty ninety. No, they didn't want to say it, but I can read it in their face. No one bothered. They were all standing there. They said, can somebody go and check my balance again? And no one responded. I can't remember who it was that ran. I think it was uh, either uh, SBTRA or Kula or SB Elijah. I said, please, somebody just take and uh, check me the balance again. So whoever it is went, checked the balance. When he came back in the balance, boy, he was beeping, beeping with a big smile. I said, oh, in my honor, I said, man, thank you, Lord, what is it? So when they came, they said, what is it? So print one print, uh, you know, one small piece of paper, you know, the ATM, a balance print. When I look at that, it had 12,000, 12,000. Within a span of two hours of sitting around there discussing the menu and whatever that we were doing, the $3.89 changed to 12000 I look at it and I said, okay. You know, in my heart, I said, maybe something is wrong. Maybe something. And then I just look at him and said, I've got 12000 I've got 12000 I've got 12000 Oh, you can pay the deposit. So we were so excited. We came down the lift and then I received this email. And I know maybe you are watching me this morning and this is a testimony of what you did to me that day. And I look at that email. The email said, Auntie Ryan, I managed to get your account number uh, from the headquarters uh, at BSP. And I just wanted to let you You know that I put across the money. I'm, I actually received my FNPF, and this is from a lady all the way in Europe. And then she said, "My family, I, you know, they've moved on. Uh, I've lost my uh, my uh, grandfather the way it's supposed to be because I believe not because of who I am, not because of what we do, but it's because of your giving. So and give with a good heart. And also, when you see people giving, don't have a bad heart. When you see people receiving, don't, don't have, have a bad, bad heart. heart. Or if you're looking." I said, oh, you know, we came in, we have a more valid reason to be given a visa. But how come those people are given their visa? Have a good heart. We have every 101 reason to say that Hallelujah. you justify yourself. You're supposed to be receiving. Or you're working in a company and then you're trying to argue yourself out. Man, I work, I report in on time, I knock off on time, I say late. To be but this person hardly do anything, but yet have got higher salary level as me. Have a good heart. So today, at the end of this service, when you have Holy Communion, I will need you to check two things. Check the window of your heart that is good, and also check your giving, whether it's good. Are you sharing your food? Are you sharing your, your, your plate? Are you sharing whatever that you have? It's not only money. It's everything about you that you know you can bless another soul. You know, most of the time, we are, we are, we are very good in the theology. Yeah, yeah, we can talk we about, talk about the, the Word of God. But we don't want to do it. But my friend that you're watching today, it is the practical things that you do. Oh, yeah. This is what calls the blessing. Hallelujah. So I want to challenge our life today. It's the practicality. If you're not giving, forget about receiving. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you're not giving, I'll say that again, forget about receiving. If you are not praying, forget about power. If you are not acknowledging the Holy Spirit, and forget about the revelation. Amen. There are work to do in the kingdom. And that work is fasting and praying. Work on your heart. Yeah. Work on your hand to give. And God will answer you. Most of the time, Christians are way, way behind yeah, the in our receiving, right? in the things that we receive, because we are not giving. And I want to challenge our life today. Amen. As we go to the Holy Communion today, I want to challenge our life. Make sure that you give. Give. And give and give because Jesus said it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken, running over. The level of your giving will be the level of your receiving. receiving. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to be having a holy communion this morning, and I believe this holy communion for you and for all of us will be a holy communion for those of you who haven't endeavor uh, to give and have a good heart. Uh, so it works both ways. It cleanses your heart for a new start, 
and also it generates a heart of giving towards God. Because in 1 Corinthians 2 9, it says that no eyes shall see, no ears have heard, no heart you know, can even uh, conceive everything and anything that God will do for those who love Him. So one take that you must take with you today is that Mark 12, 30. You need to love the Lord your God. That's the first commandment. You have to love him. Love him with your heart. Love him with your soul. Love him with your mind. And love him with your strength. Everything about you, you need to love him. Because only when you love him, then you will look around and you will hear him. You will have a good heart towards people around you. So the heart of the matter is your heart. And on that note, I will ask of you as you have your bread yeah. and your Holy Communion, regardless, worship center, individual family, or zone, wherever you're standing, I get ready. And this is today is just for you. I forget about the people around you. It's just for you to fix you. Fix your heart and also fix your spirit and ask God to elevate and raise your level of faith. Whatever sickness you may be sitting on today, receive your healing from God. Whatever sickness that you see that can be an obstacle to your serving God, receive from God to deliver you from that sickness. Whatever demonic attack that is around you, you stand strong in the Lord today and rebuke and fight and don't ever take anything for granted. Never settle for less. Always leave the best in God. So join me as we partake the bread. Let us partake the bread this morning. And also join us in partaking the wine. It'll give you time to Gasilevu to pray whatever agreement and covenant that you have had with your God this morning. Believe and receive your healing, your provision, your protection, your breakthrough, your every areas of life. Lord, we thank you. We praise your mighty name. As we come before you, but the, Lord, you thank you, Father. the bread represents your body, the wine represents your, your blood. Amen. Your covenant. We thank you, Father God, as we receive today. Good heart, hands to give. Good heart. Hands to give. Oh, Thank you for the teaching. Thank you for the enlightenment that we received this morning. Thank you for the blessing Hallelujah. that we received this morning. Through the teaching, through the sharing. Yes, Lord. And we thank you that we partake the Holy Communion. It's an added blessing into families, into relationship, and into our homes. Amen. We thank you for the God in every area of our life. We have been blessed today. Thank you for your blessing. You releasing your blessing today. Into Hallelujah. every family, worship center, into zone, into people's life. Right here, right now, this wonderful morning. We give you the glory and the honor and the praises. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray and everyone say amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. And uh, also for next week on Saturday, we have a scheduled queen, you are. The initial plan was to have this for all new Methodists worldwide uh, joining us on virtual as well as the DA in Fiji. Uh, there has been a general interest from others outside new Methodists and it's going to be happening at the National Gymnasium yes, on Saturday, uh, commencing at 9 o'clock in the morning for the whole day. So join us if you have nothing to do on Saturday the 20th. Uh, come and listen uh, to speakers that we are trying to get together, uh, which we have thought of this morning to make it a, a more yeah, uh, interesting one other than just a new Methodist. So come and learn and listen yeah. on uh, the Queen you are. Because queen you are. Uh, God has given you that authority and the ability to be the Queen. Uh, not to be served and fanny yourself as a queen, but to have the spirit of the queen and live like a queen and command the things around you like a queen because God has created you to be the queen you are. So join us on Saturday at the gymnasium. Call headquarters or pop in at my TV if you have further questions. On that note, uh, we have the Fourth Shore live service today, 3 o'clock. Uh, as normal, we have our Gastelevo preaching from there. Uh, join us on the uh, Facebook of my TV as well as the ministry one. We only have one hour and straight after that, you, you can still join us or go with us on the New Methodist page. So join us for the 3 o'clock and we look forward to be um, serving you yet uh, with the powerful word of God. On that note, Thank you. We meet again on the God of our nation next week, Amen. March 21st. Amen.